it's mostly about the strict enforcement of the mandatory vaccination laws in this country that's very different from other countries. When I took a look at the European Union, I found it very interesting that eight or nine countries that do have mandatory vaccination are the countries that were formerly behind the Iron Curtain. I think that that's one of the reasons that our organization has always strongly advocated for the inclusion of informed consent protections in vaccine policies and laws and why we place such an emphasis on trying to protect vaccine exemptions, including the non-medical exemptions like the religious and conscientious belief exemption. Because as we were talking previously, almost nothing today qualifies as an official medical contraindication to vaccination. Before the law was passed in 1986, there were more contraindications and precautions that you and other doctors who were giving vaccines were told about and you were more careful. Now, almost nothing qualifies as a medical reason to not vaccinate. So doctors are vaccinated even after children have exhibited clear vaccine reactions, including convulsions, because that's what the, the official guidelines tell them to do. So very few doctors will write a medical exemption. All let me ask you, in the studies, in the vaccine studies, children with convulsions are exempted. They don't, they will not include, right. typically they don't include very young children, they don't include children with autoimmune diseases or children with, with neurological, severe neurological disorder or seizures. So if they're not in the studies, how can they be considered safe for those children? These clin pre-licensure clinical studies, we call whitewashed groups because they do not accept into those studies often children who have had a history of convulsions, children who are sick at the time of vaccination, even in some studies, children who have a family history of certain kinds of immune and brain disorders. It's a very whitewashed population that is studied in the pre-licensure trials. However, after the vaccine is licensed and recommended for universal use by children, suddenly there are no contraindications or very, very few. To me, when, when you have so few medical contraindications and you have very limited study, pre-licensure, when the vaccine is released for public use, it's, in a way, it's an uncontrolled experiment because the post-marketing surveillance is not real rigorous either. Certainly, vaccine reaction reporting is not rigorous. So, you know, you have a, a situation where really the people do need to have the information and they need to have the freedom to make vaccine choices without being sanctioned and punished for making those choices. Now, in the state of Virginia, I believe it is, I, I have been told, uh, because it's come on my lap, to look at a, a case that's going on there right now where a child got a medical exemption. But the state is now saying that doctors can't make the, the medical exemptions. It has to be a state health official. Are you aware of this? this you, is, can you tell us about that? I mean, this has been an increasing trend where you have on the books in states that a medical exemption is allowed. But when a doctor tries to write a medical exemption that does not strictly conform to the contraindication guidelines of the Centers of Disease Control, the state health officials come in and say, sorry, your medical exemption is not valid. It does The reasons you put down there are not valid. My organization believes that in this country, a doctor, a licensed doctor, medical doctor, or a state designated health worker, because they are designated other health workers to give vaccines, should be able, if in his or her professional opinion, that child or that adult is not a candidate for vaccination. That medical exemption, what, irregardless of whether it conforms to the federal guidelines, that doctor should be able to give a medical exemption. I mean, this is just, it's not right for a medical professional giving vaccines, if they believe that a child is not a candidate or an adult is not a candidate, that they are prevented from getting a medical exemption, this puts way too many people at risk. Well, it's interesting.